everybody. Happy Mother's Day if you're seeing this. So, uh, it's Mother's Day, whether or not you're seeing this on Mother's Day or not, but, uh, I had a little bit of time, and I don't know, I'm trying to get better about just when the idea to do something strikes me to just go ahead and do it and quit trying to, uh, worry about having the perfect hair and the perfect lighting and, uh, <laughs> and all of those of you who have watched this channel forever are like, Aaron, since when have you ever had the perfect hair or the perfect lighting? And, you know, good point. That's, that's an excellent point, but uh, I guess I'm going to quit trying to worry about that. So anyway, my uh, husband and kids have gone to the store to pick up some things, I think, for dinner, and I was here, and I was messing around with some drop spindles, and like I said, it's Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all of the moms or caretakers or, uh, you know, people who've been mothers to people even if they weren't really their mother, you know, mothers come in all sorts of forms. So happy Mother's Day to everybody. I hope you're having a great day. And I wanted to do one thing because I think about being, you know, mothers and I was just talking to my mom earlier. One thing my mom and I both have in common and that we really like doing is drop spindling. Hey Cheryl! <laughs> and um, we both really like spinning. So she primarily spins on a spinning wheel. I learned on a drop spindle and then moved to a spinning wheel and then kind of went back to drop spindle because I really enjoyed teaching it. And I have done, uh, God, I have many different impromptu drop spindle classes. And uh, while it is tempting to be like, I've already done that, why do another one? I felt that I wanted to do it today for Mother's Day. So, uh, you know, nobody else was in the house, so what the hell? So let me, I figured I'd do something a little different though. So hold on, let me get my, uh, <clears throat> I have, spindles so I thought instead of doing it on my usual usually when I teach <laughs> happy Mother's Day Jennifer um usually when I teach drop spindle I usually teach on the old uh trusty uh top whirl spindle which is definitely what I recommend and for learning on is a top whirl drop spindle but I have lots of videos on that it's mainly because if you're doing the park and draft method you can easily put it under your arm or put it in between your knees and I feel like it's just a pretty simple setup. So this is a top whirl drop spindle very similar to exactly the one I learned to spin on. And um, so this is what I recommend for learning on. Um, but then once you learn, like I said most people move on to a spinning wheel, but it can be fun to, uh, hello. <laughs> Oh, yep, that's what I have right here. That was just about to move on to, uh, uh, Suze says she likes to spin on a Turkish spindle, and I thought it would be fun. And here, of course, I've got my yarn all funny on it now. Let me get it straight again. I hadn't spun on this Turkish spindle in a good while, so let me move my slip knot back up to where it's supposed to be. Happy Mother's Day. And this one's really pretty. This is from Schneider Spindles. Y'all probably seen it before on this channel. It's my Turkish spindle. I really love it. It has narwhals on it, so it's very fun. And I have been known to uh, take this to the beach with me for beach spinning. Um, and actually, we're planning all of our summer stuff, so may have to uh, bust out the old narwhal spindle to go back to the beach this year. But I thought I would do a quick little demo on my Turkish spindle versus my usual top whirl drop spindle. So the first thing you're doing is you get it started and you're making kind of a center pull ball at the bottom. And so instead of having a hook at the top, this one's got just kind of like a little bump. And you make just like a, and you can see it's fuzzy, my yarn is definitely not perfect, like a little slip knot. And then you get it spinning and then the, and one, the th good, great thing about Turkish spindles is they spin really, really well. So get a good bit of twist going and I'm short, so I'm going to keep trying to back up. <laughs> so I'm going to keep backing up so you can still see it. And so go all the way down. You can see I got a good bit. And then I'm going to come back over here. I like to kind of take with my hands. So now I've got the yarn from here to here on my fingers and just kind of like wrap it up so that you have like a nice little nest and then you just kind of you don't want to get it too tight so then you just kind of pop your little slip knot back off and this is the part where I always get confused then you uh, are wrapping it up and down kind of in a diagonal over your arms here like that and it keeps it makes this great little center pull ball like I said on your spindle but you want to leave like see if you get too crazy and you wrap it up then see you don't have enough room to really get to the top so you usually kind of have to go 
give yourself enough of a tail to get back to the top to make another slip knot and then get it spinning again and it drops I had it too thin there this is a and if it does drop like mine just did all you're gonna do is like all my classes I ever teach you just attach one fuzzy end to another fuzzy end the fuzzy ends are like glue so you just put your fuzzy ends back together and get some twist back in it like so and hopefully I can reattach this here I'd let it get too thin I'm gonna put my slip knot back on there and see I've got a little bit more and I'm gonna get the twist going There you go. There you go. The C dropping. It's a little bit harder to reattach, I think, on a Turkish spindle, which is what this one is, than a top whirl, which is why, like I said, I usually recommend people learn on the top whirl. I'll keep backing up, backing up, backing up, or a bottom whirl. And come back up, and like I said, I'll show you one more time. I'm going to make like a nice little rotation, and then pop it off the top and then wrap it back around and then like I said to do the slip knot it you literally just make a little hoop stick the nose through and then it pulls tight so it's it's not something you're having to well it's called like a knot you're not having to like tie and retie you're literally just making a hoop and then sticking the little point through like I said I really like how Schneider spindles designs their Turkish spindles and this fiber is a mohair alpaca blend, I believe. It was from my stash from Big Dream Farm, who Kelly is one of our dye artists with Crafty Housewife Yarns, but she's also a farmer, and that is her family farm. <laughs> I hope you can still hear me. I'll come back up here. So you can definitely, we have sold her fiber on um, the website. From time to time when she has it and we definitely like using it for different blending and uh, for our hand spun yarn subscription we've used it a good bit. So that is a little bit of a spinning demo on my Turkish spindle so let me wrap this on here. All right and there you go you can kind of see the bottom and I had a couple other this was another fun one I believe I got from Schneider spindles as well you can see for comparison's sake, and I have videos on these you can look back on my YouTube channel. This one, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, so apologies in advance. Uh, Daglin, I believe. It's been a while since I looked up how you say it. It is a Scottish style or Celtic style uh, drop spindle, and I got it from Schneider Spindles as well. And it's a similar idea to the Turkish one, this one being the Turkish spindle, and this one being the Scottish spindle or Daglin. Um, but you can see the pros and cons of both. This one definitely has more sticky outy parts. So, you know, if you're trying to stick it in a, uh, you know, little bag or something, it might have more things that could get broken. And I think that was the idea with these is that they are more compact. So I think they said the men who are the shepherds on these, God, I haven't done this thing. It's been a long time since I've messed with this one. Um, you know, this would fit very easily down in like the you know a bag or a hip pack so you could take it with you without as many things sticking out that you had to worry about poking you in the butt or the side <laughs> when you were doing things but this one you can also make it's got this cross hatch design on the bottom but the idea is that you're also making but it just gets on here here so you would do the same slip knot situation with the little nose and then this one, here if I can get it to do right. So it has a shorter spin. I definitely find the, um, let's not mess with this thing in forever. I find the Turkish spindle easier. This one you can see it's got, it does rotate well, but it's just, it doesn't have as long of a spin life as the other one. But you can definitely, the idea is then, you know, pretend I just spun this you can kind of wrap it also making kind of an up and down motion for a uh, kind of a center ball ball off of this one as well so you know you would wrap it on there and then bring your tail up same idea slip knot 
and then spin from there. So that is a, because I, that's the fun thing about spindles, I just kind of enjoy collecting them. Um, even though, you know, I'm obviously, if I'm spinning, I'm usually on my spinning wheel, but collecting spindles is really fun, and I like all of the different functionality in them. So anyhow, those are my spindles. So the general idea, I guess I was gonna do kind of a lesson, I guess I did more of a demo. The idea if you've never done a drop spindle before is, and I guess I'm back to old trusty over here, um, you are wanting to get twist in your fiber. Because as you saw where I broke mine, the fuzzy parts of the fiber, once you enter twist into it, is what is like the glue that holds it together. So um, I think I just did a video not too long on very basic drop spindles. So I won't bore you with that again. Go back and look. It was literally like two weeks ago. I just did a good video on this exact drop spindle, I believe. Um, let's see, you're getting the twist, and then that starts making very, uh, you know, basic yarn. And once you see, once you get the hang of it, I and mean, you can literally, you know, <laughs> you'll be picking up anything random and fibery, and you know, if you have a spindle, you can see how it becomes a sickness and you're just like oh let me get this dog hair or a cotton ball or you know anything you have if you have a spindle laying around and you get the fundamentals of it you can start making yarn but like i said i just had a video i would reference you to go back and look at i think it was like really basic spinner tips <laughs> it was from a couple weeks ago um the picture i think i have a big white weezer t-shirt on so go look for that one but i wanted to here and i even wrote them down because we all know, I can get the fur off. Spindles are beautiful. I'm head over heels with my wheels. I already have two traditionals. Oh yeah, no, it's a slippery slope. It's definitely, and I'm sorry I missed the name. It, it, they pop up, the comments from doing this live, they pop up and then like fade out on me. Um, yeah, no, it's definitely a slippery slope. I started out with, like I said, just totally for, just for fun on a top world drop spindle and then just, yeah, like face first into uh, all the spinning wheels. And now I've got so many spindolution wheels and drop spindles <laughs> and all of the things. So it's definitely, it's fun. So, you know, like any gateway drug, you can uh, definitely start with, with drop spindles and see where it takes you. And here I wrote down, <laughs> I wrote down some coupons because I was like, I know I'm going to free. It is a slippery slope, but yeah, no, it's, it's the most fun. That's what I think one of our, I don't know, one of the pages on the website, I think it, we're talking about it being like the most fun rabbit hole you can fall down. So it's definitely very like Alice in Wonderland-ish uh, that way. So let's see, what what did I write down here? Uh, currently, these are from emails <laughs> I just sent out. So I was like, here, if I'm gonna do a video, let me read it to people. And you can see we're super official around here. If you use the, and I'll type this up and stick it here, if you would like my official drop spindle course, um, which is on my website, it's in the members section, and it's just the drop spindle course, you can save 20% with the code drop spindle 20 because that's a very creative uh, coupon code for you. So 20% with uh, drop spindle 20. So I will type that up and stick in there. And like I said, that's if you would like to learn more about drop spindling, my official course that I actually like wrote down and thought out and have homework and stuff versus me just rambling sporadically. So if you would like it in a more multiple video, step-by-step, -step, easy to find where you're at and like go back and rewatch the basics over and over again versus just like a live demo, it's already a super cheap. I think it's like 20 bucks. So it's not a huge investment, <laughs> but it helps keep, uh, helps keep us going here at Crafty Housewife Yarns to uh, buy all the small farm things and support all the artists. So that's drop spindle 20 for 20% off. And my I here, and I will spare you the, the long story that many of you may have already heard, but the Dream Yarn course, if you are wanting to go more into spinning in general, spinning on wheels, art yarn, um, got all the things. So fiber prep, different types of fiber prep you'd use for different spinning situations like flax, cotton, silk, long wools, short wools, all the things. It's got, just go read the description. I'm not going to tell you all about it now, but my dream yarn course is humongous. And I made it originally, God, like four or five years ago, which I'm very, I can't believe it's just, that much time has passed, but it's got like hours and hours and hours of footage. And it is once again, broken into individual videos with homework. Um, so that, cause I know I learn clearly from YouTube. It's, I know it's annoying when you're trying to learn something and you want to watch like one part over and over again. But if it's all one long video, you're always like scrolling and toggling through of like, where's that one part? So uh, I purposely made the Dream Yarn course in like, it's 
hours and hours of footage, but it's in lots of different videos that are all labeled. So if you want to see, I want to see Worsted, you can go to Worsted. If you want to see Silk, you can go to Silk. Like, it's really easy to see what you're doing, and it goes all the way from, like, you don't know, you're like, what is a spinning wheel? All the way to, uh, like, taking your yarn off the bobbin, putting it on a nitty knotty, wet setting it, getting the twist out, common troubleshooting, all the things. So, anyhow, used to be all one big course, and then I got the smart idea, because people kept wanting it to be more of a, like, lower cost membership kind of month by month thing versus like all at one time so I thought I was being really smart and I put it on Patreon to help uh fund our site my local wool our sister site and I just didn't like nobody liked how Patreon was set up it was a pain in the butt like you would people would sign up and then it was like you had to go all the way to the bottom and then like work your way up it was just it was not set up well so then when my regular website uh updated or upgraded or whatever it is it did and I had the capabilities finally to do exactly what I wanted to do exactly like I wanted it set up but hosted on my own website I very excitedly moved it over there and told everybody on Patreon you know they all got moved over for free so anyway now that is there and if you would like to try it's only eight bucks a month for a ridiculous amount of information on spinning and yarn setting and all the things and fiber types if you use the code let's see spin what i want spin what i want and i will type that up it will get you the first month free so you're welcome to go see all the things and uh like I said, it's eight dollars a month it's not a huge investment so <laughs> there's no uh, big bait and switch there but uh, you can definitely, for $0 a month, go check that out because I'm really proud of all the uh, information we have on that. So there are my Mother's Day specials. So happy Mother's Day. And I think I just heard the garage door, so I think my own kids are home. So I'm going to go see uh, what they bought at the store. I think we're doing breakfast for dinner. So that's always a hit. And I we somehow ended up with way too many eggs. So you know how it is. You end up with too many eggs, so you have breakfast for dinner. So happy Mother's Day and happy spinning and I will type up these codes real quick and uh, you know feel free to uh, go take advantage of that and uh, comment with any questions. Toodaloo!